I've said it before and I'll keep saying it, getting an autoimmune diagnosis like lupus is life-changing. But what we often don't talk about is how life-changing the journey to get that diagnosis can also be. Most have to endure months, if not years, of symptoms and multiple doctor's appointments before finally getting an answer. And that journey is made immeasurably longer and windier when an ANA is negative. Can you even have lupus if your ANA is negative? Well, yes, but of course, there's more to it. Today, I'll discuss how new methods of testing for ANA have led to more insights and problems, how to think about your other antibody test results when you have a negative ANA, and how to take all of this and practically apply it to your situation. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Anti-nuclear antibody, or ANA test, has been a cornerstone in diagnosing lupus for over 60 years. We have depended on this test, and it is conventional thinking to believe that ANA-negative lupus is very rare, if it's even a thing at all. If you want to see a group of nerdy rheumatologists get riled up, ask them about ANA-negative lupus. This controversy has been reawakened for two reasons. Number one, new testing methods have challenged our standard wisdom around ANAs. And two, clinical trials for new lupus medications have highlighted that ANA negative lupus is in fact in all of our clinics. In the last 10 years, we have had a lot of new medications tried in lupus. And in order to conduct these trials, rheumatologists will recommend their lupus patients. Well, it turns out that up to 30% of the lupus patients that are screened for these trials have a negative ANA. So what's up with that? To further complicate things, the American College of Rheumatology and the European League Against Rheumatism, the two official organizations for all things rheumatology, have established criteria that mandates a positive ANA in order to make a diagnosis of lupus. So on one hand, you have the fact that close to a third of our lupus patients in clinic have a negative ANA, yet the powers that be cite an ANA must be present in order to have lupus. So make this make sense. Well, at least part of the problem lies in how we test for or detect the ANA. For years, the only method we had was immunofluorescence or IFA using HEP2 cells. The details of this method isn't important for our purposes, but just know that this is still considered the gold standard method. And you can tell if your test has been done this way because it will either say IFA or the result, if positive, will be reported with a titer and a pattern. Our collective knowledge about all things ANA is based on using this method. Well, it's no longer the only testing method in town. Labs now also use a method called ELISA, or multiplex assays. These new methods can allow for a lot more testing to be done, but don't offer as specific results as the IFA. Between all these methods, there is a lot of variability in the quality and the consistency of test results, which I'm sure you can imagine muddies up the picture. So before even getting to the diagnosis, you can see how if the tool we use to find the antibody is imperfect, has variability, and is poorly understood by the vast majority of doctors who actually order the test, well, you can see how this can lead to a lot of confusion. So what about the other antibodies? If you've been down this road, you likely know that the ANA is usually just step one, and there are many other autoantibodies that we will test when we are looking for lupus or really any other autoimmune condition. The most common and useful next test we do are called the ENA antibodies. That's E-N-A. ENA stands for extractable nuclear antigens, which you totally don't need to know. These are the tests that are often included in an ANA panel. 
They are included because antibodies are considered types of ANA. Remember, the ANA is not just one antibody, but an umbrella term that actually includes lots of different types of antibodies. The ENA antibodies include things like the anti-Smith antibody, the anti-RNP, the anti-SSA and SSB, the anti-chromatin, and the anti-DSDNA antibody. These antibodies are more specific for various different autoimmune conditions, including lupus, mixed connective tissue disease, and Sjogren's disease. For lupus, we especially pay attention to the anti-Smith and anti-double-stranded DNA antibody, or DSDNA. So what does it mean if one of your ENA antibodies is positive, yet your ANA is negative? Well, that was exactly the question one of my newsletter readers asked, which inspired this entire video. And if you aren't subscribed to my newsletter and you like this type of content, then what are you waiting for? It's like having a rheumatologist BFF in your inbox and you can sign up via the link in the description box. Anyways, if you have a positive ENA antibody, but your ANA is negative, my super scientific explanation is something ain't right with these tests. When this happens, it's time to dig deeper and not only take a closer look at your testing, but take a closer look at your symptoms. Which brings us to what in the world can you do with all this mess? How can you navigate this level of uncertainty and get some answers so you can develop a plan to feel better? Well, my first recommendation is to actually set the testing aside and refocus on your symptoms. When we've had tons of conflicting test results, it can be easy to want to focus on which test said what, but these are the times when I literally put all the results away and go back to the patient. How are you feeling? This is the time to get specific. Think about all your symptoms, when they happen, how long have they been happening, and what makes them better or worse. If you've been dealing with this for a while, our symptom list can get quite long, but we first need to focus on what's happening daily. If you need help thinking through this and getting organized, I highly recommend downloading my free appointment home run handbook, The Lupus Edition. Included are worksheets specifically designed to get you thinking about your symptoms in a way that will best help your doctor. It will also help you organize your family history and all the treatments you may have tried up until now. It's totally free and you can download it via the link in the description box. It's this information that will help your doctor develop their pre-test probability. Okay, so like, what the heck is that? Well, the pre-test probability is your doctor's rough estimate of how likely they think you do or don't have any particular condition. The ANA test works best when there is a high pre-test probability. And the way your doctor will determine if your pre-test probability for lupus is high is via your symptoms and your story. So although anyone with hand pain and a positive ANA may seem like they have lupus, if I get more information about that hand pain, like which knuckles exactly are hurting, is it associated with any swelling, and are there any other symptoms, then I might find out that it is more in line with OA and that the ANA is actually a false positive. Once you've outlined your symptoms, the next step is to ensure you've had the best quality ANA test done. This can be tricky and may require a bit of digging. Remember, the gold standard is the IFA by HEP2 cells. You can sometimes see on the result printout a description of the test that was run. This may require getting a copy of the actual lab printout and not relying on what is reported in the patient portal. If you can't easily determine the method, ask your doctor. But understand, not every doctor who orders an ANA, one, knows the type of ANA they ordered, and two, understands the differences. This is where getting a specialist and or asking for the full ENA panel can be helpful. Some panels are done as a reflex, meaning they only run the test if the ANA is positive, but you can run the panel separately from the ANA if the level of suspicion is particularly high. Now, I know, dictating to our doctors what blood tests or referrals we want, especially when our ANA has come back negative, can be a tricky conversation. Reminding them how long you've had your symptoms and how other investigations haven't turned up anything can help make the argument that this may be an appropriate next step for you. I want to also briefly mention that although it may not be the clean path we all want, 
it is possible to try different treatments even before we have a solid diagnosis. This obviously requires a lot of care and good communication between you and your doctor. But I have found that it is in these ANA negative situations where an approach like this can be helpful. So what can this look like? Well, it may mean you start a trial of prednisone or hydroxychloroquine. It may mean you target joint and body pain via a neurological mechanism with medications we would use for conditions like fibromyalgia. Deciding to start a therapy like this doesn't mean you're giving up, but it just acknowledges that answers may not be easy and there are some things that may help with your symptoms in the meantime. It's also in the ANA negative situations where lifestyle changes can make a big difference. While waiting for specialist appointments, focus on improving your sleep, your stress management, and incorporating more anti-inflammatory foods into your diet. So what have we learned? ANA negative lupus is a thing, but how common it is, what does it mean, and how best to diagnosis? Well, we don't have a lot of solid answers. Educate yourself on the type of testing you've already had done and get specific when discussing your symptoms and you can move toward more solid ground. And don't dismiss the opportunity to try a new lifestyle change or medication that may help with your symptoms while you keep looking for answers. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to learn more about the double-stranded DNA antibody, you can check out this video here and don't forget to download the Lupus edition of the Appointment Home Run Handbook in the description box. Thanks and we'll see you next time.